6 o'clock the right time. I'm not sure you qualify. Well, we 
record. We had a couple all state players that put up over 600 shots. Seeing their weekly stats, and I was at the top of the list. It was, yeah. We now pass for trying to beg Watkins.
foul, he holds number 30 by us. Team's fifth. That's the line, black number 10. Play of Emma, two shots.
So a hard fought contest there, but the Blackford JV Lady Bruins fall to Frankton Eagles, 34 to 30. Blackford with several chances there, tantalizing balls that rolled around the rim that the crowd was ready to explode and but just couldn't quite get over the hump. We'll be back in about 20 minutes, roughly 6.30 for the tip off of the girls game. Well, that'll be followed by the varsity boys action. A little bit larger than normal sized band tonight. The alumni band playing along with the regular band. So some good volume, be some good energy here in the crowd tonight. We've got pork burgers for sale at the front gate. You've still got plenty of time to get out here. Um, if you're here in Hartford City, you can be here before the, the tip of the girls game. If you're a little bit further away, you can still make it by the second half at least and be here for the boys game. This will be game six in the conference schedule for the Bruins. Bruins going at 5-0, and oh, looking for a second consecutive league championship. Franklin at 2-2, two and two, probably out of the championship picture, but looking to have a good good showing and possibly take the, the uh, conference traveling trophy, the bell, away from the Bruins. Even if Franklin can't get a conference championship, they can take the bell home with them tonight with a victory over the Blackford Bruins. Tonight, Blackford High School will also be honoring Jill Chapman former Blackford Lady Bruin, Hall of Fame at Blackford High School, set career scoring records at Blackford, went on to play for Indiana University where she's in the top 10 in a multitude of statistical categories. Drafted in the first round and went to the Detroit Shock of the WNBA. She'll be here with us tonight. I believe we've got a jersey that will be hanging somewhere in the, in the facility. She may stop by and chat with us for a little bit. That's all we've got for you for now. We'll come back at 6.30 and join us for tonight's action.
Well, welcome to Blackford High School as Blackford hosts the Frankton Eagles and the Eagles come in the Central Indiana Conference foe. They'll try to take that Bell Trophy home with them tonight if they can beat the Blackford Bruins. Bruins come into this game tonight, 5-0 in the conference. Bruins are once again on a collision course to meet the Eastbrook Panthers potentially in the last game of the season. That's what happened last year. Blackford was able to win that one and come away with the conference championship last year. But first, they've got Frankton here tonight. Frankton's a very good team. Frankton is 13-7 and seven overall, 2-2 two and two in the conference. Their leading scorers, you see there's number 10. That's Emma Sperry. Sperry averages 18 and a half points a game. Their second leading scorer, Amaya Collins, number 32, averages a just a little under that at 14.6 a game. Together, the two seniors average account for 62% of the Bruins scoring. So not the Bruins, but the Frankton Eagles. Blackford continues to be led this season so far by number 12, Chloe Wicker, as Blackford comes out of the out of the locker room to the school song of the Frankton Eagles, actually. Chloe had an awesome game this week against the APA Jets. Chloe set a career high with 22 points, including six three-pointers. Blackford record for three-pointers in a game is eight. She came up a little bit short of that. She continues to lead the Bruins with just under 15 points a game scoring average. Sydney Morris for Blackford, number 31. She's been averaging just under 11 at 10.8 points a game. On the season, she has 109 steals. That's a new record for Blackford, eclipsing Emily Wilman's previous record of 96 in a season. A lot of those steals for Sydney end up as easy layups. That's driven her to a 67% field goal shooting average this year. 67% with only two games left in the season. The previous did, record, the, pre did, the previous record. Go ahead. <laughs> the previous record, Keith, do you know who owns the previous record in field goal percentage at 59%? Uh, I do not. I, I do not. Second place in that category is Sydney Morris last season. Okay. Do you know who number three is at 53%? Uh, no, you got me there, too. Sydney Morris, her sophomore season. Okay. <laughs> so, quick steals lead to some quick and easy layup baskets. Sydney certainly has taken advantage of that this season. Chloe Wicker, with her six three-pointers earlier this week in its APA, gave her 62 for the season. That ties her for sixth in the state. Keith, you know who she is tied with? Uh, you got me there, too. She's tied with Sophia Morrison of Eastbrook. Oh, wow. She's in the gym tonight. Not tonight. Next oh. Friday. Next Friday, Eastbrook will be coming here. Okay. And at the, yes. at the very worst, Blackford will be playing for a share of the, of the conference championship. Better get here early for that. Get here early for that. That should be a good one. We've got a good crowd here tonight for this one. The alumni band is here. Our camera shot's kind of, you get the, the shot of the less occupied side of the the gymnasium, so it looks like there's a small crowd on that side, but this side that we're on is a pretty good crowd. Hoping for more to come in. We've still got the boys game coming up a little bit after this, and we'll take a break now here for our national anthem.
Franklin's leading scorers tonight, Sperry and Collins, both seniors. They'll face off against Blackford's cohort of eight seniors. I like that music, Matt. Back in the day, we were. Yeah. If you're not aware, Keith has his. Uh, he's showing me his 1975 Fort Wayne Northside Redskins T-shirt. That was that. How rank? deep in the closet did you have to dig to find <laughs> that? Still fits like back in the day. Looks like Sperry is going to jump for Franklin against Sidney Morris. A lot of electricity in the building here tonight. Blackford will control the trip. Tip. and we'll start off in a man-to-man. -man. Expect, expect them to apply pretty close pressure to Wicker to make sure she can't get off a good look. Anderson Prep struggled with their zone defense earlier this week to really keep an eye on Chloe Wicker. As a result, Wicker got a lot of open looks and when she has a clean look at the basket, her shooting percentage is extremely high. She thought about that one. Blackford taking their time. That would have been a little deep. Franklin really not applying a lot of pressure as long as Blackford keeps the ball outside. A mishandle there by Sydney, but she corrals it. That's Amaya Collins playing defense on Chloe Wicker there. Two of the leading scorers on each team. Actually, Amaya's the second leading scorer, right at 15 points a game for Frankton. Little bump there by the Eagles, Sperry. Ball tipped away. We've run a minute and a half off the clock already on this one possession. Keith, you predicted earlier that you thought this would be a low scoring game. Yeah, I just, yeah. Yep. Sydney drives baseline. She bumped, but no foul called. Faith Gephardt will try the same move. No luck. There's a good look for Chloe. She gets it off quickly oh, and yeah. knocks it down. A good sign oh, for the yeah. Bruins when Chloe 
Chloe can start off hot like that. And the Bruins are gonna go with the full court press. Oh, the deep pass and Savannah Morris gets the steal. Sydney Morris will set things up and Hartford will be patient once again. Skyhawk will set things up here at the top. Over to Gephardt, into the corner to Savannah Morris. Bruins look to reset their motion. And Skyhawk in the corner. Savannah Morris will drive and spin. She gets double team, throws it up. She's blocked by Sperry. Almost three minutes into the quarter, Frankton finally gets their first offensive possession. And they're gonna throw that away. That should be over and back, I believe. Yep, it is. So 5.08 to go in the first quarter. Frankton yet to get a shot up. It almost has the feel of a football game, Keith. It does. Field possession and, yeah, try and, and time of possession. Clock, yeah. Field position and time of possession, yeah. Good patience by Blackford, though. They haven't forced anything, although you could almost argue the last one was a little bit of a force on the drive, but she's got to do something. And Skyhawk with a crossover, gets to the basket, throws it up, draws the foul. That foul's going to be an Emma Key. Oh, nope, nope, that's on Kurtz. Skyhawk missed the first. She's a 54% free throw shooter. That means she's due to hit this one, right? Correction. Yes. Yeah. Foul this one is in. Two. Oh, they corrected the foul. I actually was right the first time. <laughs> that foul was on Emma Key. <laughs> Second one won't fall either, and Frankton has the, has the rebound. So Sperry. Collins will, uh, Amaya Collins will inbound for the Eagles. She's looking for Sperry. No, she's not looking for Sperry. That's Sophie Hoagland. Oh, well, and Curtis. No, it's not and Curtis on the guy, but the foul's called on Savannah uh, Morris. Curtis knocks down the first free throw. She's a 60% shooter from the line. Doesn't take a lot though, six of 10. She's now eight of 12 on the season, moving that percentage right up. And the Eagles are on the board. Van Skyhawk with the crossover, found a little bit of space. She's in the lane looking for something to happen. Good fake by Sydney. She draws the contact and gets the roll. Now is she the uh, Lady Bruin with the highest field goal percentage? She is. She has the three seasons of the highest field goal percentage. See, you know, some people would argue that maybe. You know, there is there is a minimum number of shots required to qualify. So <laughs> some people might have shot like 100% <laughs> if maybe they hit one of one or something, but that doesn't qualify. Uh, we'll talk about that later when there's a lull in the action. I have a dog Jamal in that fight. Goes to the Eagles. Blackford will, Blackford will apply the full court press again. Sperry can handle the ball. Sperry for, for three. It's a little short. Sydney Morris comes away with the rebound. Halfway through the first, Blackford up five to two.
Blackford with a little two-man operation there. We had three Blackford offensive players just kind of camped on the baseline of the lane. Good defense by Franklin playing very, a little conservative, not over committing on anything. I believe we had a jump ball call there. That's going to stay with Blackford. Jump ball goes to the Bruins. Uh, Blackford tries to get the ball to Wicker, but that's stolen by Collins. She puts the ball up under the basket. Keith, we had a lot of energy in the building to start the game. Fans were pumped and the band was playing, but offense has been definitely slow. It's been a little quiet from a fan perspective. Not a whole lot to cheer about other than that first three-pointer by Wicker. I, I, Blackford showing good patience. Uh, I feel Franklin's a team that can run, and I don't think that's a game that Blackford wants to get into. Well, Franklin's certainly not pushing the pushing the action defensively. He's sitting back a little bit, giving the Bruins space on the perimeter. Just making sure they don't get anything easy. Blackford looks to get it inside the Morris. They, she does get the ball. Not in a great position to shoot. Gephardt shows, throws up the left-handed runner. Nice teardrop there. Nothing but net. Blackford up seven to two. Curtis from the top of the key for three. Wow. It's good. Three point basket, three two, Ryan Collins. Collins is a 35% shooter from range. Best on the Frankfurt Eagles. No, nope, Sperry's actually 38%, so both of them pretty good. Isn't Chloe Wicker higher than that? Chloe Wicker is 41%. Yeah. Actually, with her six for eight performance earlier this week, she's moved up to 43%. Morris will try a three from the corner. It won't go, and we've got a foul under the basket. That's going to go on the Bruins against Savannah Morris. Foul goes from 25, Savannah Morris for second. That's Savannah's second here in the first quarter, so, so she's going to come to the bench. Brooklyn McLean is going to come in and replace her. A little bit of a concern for there for Blackford. They really wouldn't like to see her pick up that foul quite this early. Still, Blackford will bring the full court pressure. Sperry's open in the lane. Morris tries to deny that, but Collins thought about it from deep. She will take Still it. Still thinking about it. Off the mark, but Sperry comes away with the rebound. She's a big presence in there. Collins again. Hoists it up, knocks it down. And Franklin will take the first lead of the night, eight to seven, with one minute to go here in the first quarter. Two big threes there by Collins. Back for the turn it over. Nothing coming easy for the Bruin offense. Side. Uh, Eagles get it in right at the basket. Shot by Curtis wouldn't fall, and Blackford's got the ball. 20 seconds to go, a chance to retake the lead. That part posts up, and we get a foul called on Ann Curtis of the Eagles. She looks to be a little shook up there, but I think she's all right. She's going to come out. Sophie Hoagland is going to check in for the Eagles. They'll check out Curtis, make sure she's all right. 
Check the back in for the Eagles at the 30 with Sophia Hogan. Blackford with one more chance here to try to maybe get the lead back here at the end of the quarter. Tried to get the ball inside to McLean, but the Eagles tipped it out. Get part inbounds over the top to Wicker. She finds Morris. Watch Thought about the clock. It. Down to four seconds. Gonna have to take the shot. Oh. Morris does get it off, but the shot won't fall. So after one, the Frankton Eagles hold a one-point lead. Blackford led the entire quarter until that last shot. Maya Collins had two three-pointers for the Frankton Eagles. That's the only two, their only two field goals so far this game. They're leading, That's been enough. Their leading score did not connect in the first quarter, did you? No, Emma Sperry did not have a basket in the first quarter. Boy, a lot of excitement in the gym tonight. A couple of common opponents to both of these teams. Blackford was able to knock off Alexandria earlier in the season by 11 points. Well, Alexandria managed to defeat Frankton twice, once in regular conference play, 31 to 51, and again in a holiday tournament, 47 to 32. So as far as common opponents go, Blackford played Anderson, or Alexandria a lot more competitively and actually won as opposed to how Frankton did. That's just one opponent in a couple of games. Frankton's definitely got two very talented scorers. Here's Collins, one of them. We're going to get a travel call there. Blackford will send everybody to the baseline, and Wicker will run around screens. She gets the ball, but well out of the shooting area. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I love the effective shooting area. <laughs> Sydney Morris has some space. A little out of her normal range. Franklin seems to be extending the defense a little bit now. There's a good look for Wicker. And it's good! She has been on a hot streak. It should be eight of her last ten if you go back to the last game. Two of two tonight. And Blackford goes back on top. Here's Collins, she'll try to match Wicker, it's short. Morris with the rebound. Brooklyn McLean was underneath, unattended for a moment, calling for the ball, but the Bruins didn't see her. Be careful not to get a five second call here, the official is counting. We don't have really good records for single season three point makes for the Blackford okay. Bruins. But the records that we do have, Chloe is far and away the leader with her now 64 on the season. And her high game is six, eight. Uh, I don't know how many individual ones. She had six earlier. That's maybe it. She's wide open again. This one well short, but rebound. Oh. oh. They will say that that one hit the line. Hey, 
Texas, we're in a replay. Uh, uh, let's replay, see if that last ball was saved or was not, Keith. Okay. So Wicker threw up the shot. Well, I do have to find the play button. There we go. Does the ball hit the end line? No, not even close. Oh, her foot does, though. Her okay, foot I'll take that. Her foot did. We'll give him that call. Try that one more time here. I think she steps on the end line. Yeah, I'll, I'll definitely. She was oh, okay, that wasn't even close. Okay. I was watching the ball. The ball remained in bounds, but. We'll save our challenge flag on that one. Franklin with the ball, trailing by two. That's Emma K knocks down the three. And Franklin will go back up on top. Emma's also a 32% shooter. She's the third leading scorer for Franklin. She averages seven a game. Everyone else closer to two or less. Plane will drive. Morris on the wing looks for the cutter. No space there. She'll drive to the lane, dish it out to Savannah. Off the mark, nearly a rebound by Van Skyock, but the Eagles come away with it. Colin from the corner. It's good. Oh, oh, and she turns and faces the opponent. Not sure if she was staring down the bench or if she was staring down Morris. Eagles like to run. That's three threes now for Collins. Put the Eagles up 14 to 10. Wicker will launch it from deep. Oh. It's off the mark. Eagles feel like the Eagles are getting a little momentum here. Collins is feeling it. I wouldn't put it past her to throw that one up. Inside to Sperry. for the three-point shot there, but a few too many steps. Ball back to Blackford. It's a big possession for Blackford to prevent a score. It felt like Franklin was starting to pick up a little momentum, leading by four. That momentum seems to have dissipated in the gym a little bit. Cross court to Wicker. That pass worked well against the Anderson Prep Jets earlier this week. But Franklin closes out a little bit quicker on it. McLean skip passes over the top to, McC or to, to Morris. looking for some place to go with it. She drives and kicks it out, but between two Bruins, turnover gives the ball back to the Eagles. Wicker a little outsized there up against Sperry. Blackford in a zone. Looks at Gephardt in the middle. Decides she's not open enough to try to get the ball in there. And Skyak finds a seam. Drives to the basket, gets bumped. Mm. Shot wouldn't fall, but good recognition of the available space. Uh, Took advantage of it and drew the foul. That's the second foul on Emma Kay here with two and a half to go. Blackford Samantha Morris also has two. She's back in the game, has been for a while. Bruins get it inbound to Wicker. Wicker giving up quite a bit of height and size there to Collins also. Yeah. 
pick and roll. Van Skyak wanted it on the roll. Both defenders went with Wicker. But. been a struggle for the Bruins to find points here so far. Wicker's got two three-pointers for six points. Gephardt's added two, and Sidney Morris has added two for Blackford's 10. Amaya Collins, number 32, right there playing defense on Wicker. She's leading the Eagles so far, three three-pointers to give them a 14-10 lead right now. Gephardt will force up a shot, and she draws the contact. Blackford doesn't always get the best shots when they get the ball inside, but they almost always draw contact. Gephardt gets the second to go, pulling Blackford a little bit closer. No full court press right now for Blackford. They've settled back into a zone defense. Collins will launch it from there. Wicker's going to let her if she wants it. Sperry from inside. Hard off the back rim. Gets her own rebound, though. Sperry will launch it from deeper this time. Short this time. Franklin with another offensive rebound, though. Franklin gets the ball closer to the hoop that time with some good passing. Get, they get it to they get it to 30. That's Sophia Hoagland. Get it to her right inside the basket. Some good ball movement. Franklin Eagles now up 16 to 10. Just over a minute to go here in the first half. Van Skyak will drive. Throws up the runner. No contact this time. Franklin again with the ball. Up five a minute to go. Eagles in absolutely no hurry here at the end of the first half. And Skyak out far enough to start the standing five count. Blackford actually has five fouls to give if they wanted to, although I don't know what the point would be. Blackford has no fouls in this quarter. Collins will drive on Wicker. She gets to the basket. Drops it in with 15 seconds to go with good bucket. Not sure why they did it quite that early, but it was certainly effective. And Skyhawk. Savannah Morris. No, actually, that's McLean. She finds inside the Wicker. She does not get the shot off. And a difficult first half for the Blackford Bruins. They trail 18 to 11. Wicker leads with Six points with two three-pointers. Gephardt has three. Sydney Morris has two. Amaya Collins leads the Franklin Eagles in scoring with 11 points. That's followed up with two apiece from Sophie Hoagland and Curtis. And I'm not sure where the other one was, but Anyway, Blackford trailing 18 to 17. D difficult start. Franklin defense doing a good job of not giving the Blackford anything easy. Not over committing on defense. Blackford, no backdoor cuts, no easy layups, no steals. Sydney Morris, Blackford's all-time steals leader at 109 this season. Well, season best steals leader with 109 this season. Did not come up with a steal that first quarter. A lot of Blackford ports come off that defensive pressure. It just hasn't worked out for him so far. So we'll see what adjustments can be made at halftime. Hopefully we have a little bit more luck in the second half.
Chapman Nights. It's also Alumni Band Night. We'd like to welcome all of you returning alumni who are playing with our pit band tonight. Thank you, band members, for helping bring the energy tonight. Tonight is Meet Jill Chapman night here at Blackford High School. Jill, a former Blackford Bruin. If, if you're not aware of Jill's heroics in the past, Jill played basketball for the Bruins from the 94-95 season to the 97-98 season. In her four seasons, the Bruins won 52 games, including three seasons with 15 or more wins. Jill was selected as an all-conference player in the CIC all four years. She was sectional MVP her junior and senior seasons. In her senior year at Blackford, she was an All-State Honorable Mention and the East Central Indiana Player of the Year. In her time at Blackford, the Lady Bruins won two sectional championships. Jill was a prolific rebounder. That was her specialty, and she'll say that was her favorite thing to do. She had the top, she still currently has the six highest single game rebound or rebounding totals. Those between 22 and 26 rebounds. As a senior at Blackford, she averaged 18 rebounds a game. We don't have complete blocked shots for her career, but in her senior season, she had 110 blocked shots. And it's estimated that her career block shots would have been near 500. Jill's 19 and a half point average her junior year is fourth highest all time for Blackford. Her senior season, she averaged a whopping 23.9 points per game to the highest all time at Blackford. She sets a single season scoring record at 526 points, which is still the record. She has the highest career point total at Blackford with 1,479 points. Raymond James up to Dawson. Root, Farm, Summers, Plumbing, Heating, and Cooling, ADM Custom Creation, Irving Materials Incorporated, Marion Health, Tina Coons Hollow, Lake Placid Christian Conference Center, Sisson State Bank, JV Property Investment Group, Optimum Performance Sports. After her high school career, Jill went to Indiana University. She managed to make the top 10 in a multitude of statistical categories, including fourth in career rebounds, sixth in career points, third in field goal percentage, third in block shots, fifth in points per game at 15.4, and second in IU history in career double doubles with 42. I did none of those things. Yeah, I did none of those things. That's impressive. Yes, but you might have had a higher shooting percentage. <laughs> it's employees. Her shooting percentage was 54. Uh, what is four divided by seven? I should know that. I think it might be a percentage point. Right now. And that was not per game. <laughs> It's only a little after seven. You've definitely still got time to come out here. And we've got four minutes to go before the second half. You might even be able to get here for the fourth quarter. And we've got boys varsity action coming up 20 minutes after the end of this one. And we got a lot of good food. Blackford Bruins will take on these same Frankton Eagles. If I pull up my sheet here. Boys team at Blackford is nine and five. Frankton is eight and five. We expect a pretty good contest there. Frankton is 3-0 in the conference. They still have hopes of a conference championship. Blackford at 2-2, two two, try to play spoiler.
nearing the end of the regular season here for the girls. Only two games, well, after tonight's game, only one game. That'll be when number, number four, Eastbrook, number four and 2A, comes to Blackford High School next Friday night. If the Bruins win tonight, they'll be playing for an outright conference championship. If Frankton would manage to beat Blackford tonight, Blackford will still be playing at least for a share. They can knock off Eastbrook. Both teams would have one loss, so they would be tied for the conference championship. After that, we'll head to sectional. Sectional this year is at Elwood. The top team in that sectional probably would be considered to be Eastbrook. So Blackford could face Eastbrook a couple of times here in a couple of weeks. That tournament draw will happen in the middle of this week. We'll find out who Blackford will have in the first round. Bruins are ready to go at the end. Starts the second, second half, third quarter. Like they're trailing by seven. It's gonna have to find something better than they were getting in the first uh, half. They're being very patient, but not really finding many openings against the Franklin defense. We'll see if anything changes here. Any adjustments were made at halftime. Gotta be a foul in the middle. I think we're gonna get a foul on Sperry. Yes. Defending against Morris. A lot of push. Should probably be on the right team. I apologize for that. So Morris will post up. Still pushing. Going. She's going to get called for the three seconds, I think, that time. Okay. Well, it seems as though maybe that's the adjustment that Blackford's trying to make. They're going to post up, have Sidney Morris post up Sperry in the lane. Sperry for two. It's short. Actually, long. Rebound off to Blackford. Sperry is the leading scorer for Franklin. She's not scored, and yet the Franklin Eagles have an 18 to 11 lead. There's, yeah, that is a three. That's a three by, by Sydney Morris. Let's we'll see if Blackford can get a little momentum out of there. Close to the Franklin lead to four. They'll go with the full court press now. Franklin. And it works. Yeah, it did. Forces a turnover.
Campart looking for help, finds Van Skyock. And Skyock will drive into the lane, kick it out. Kick it out to Sydney Morris. She decided not to put up another three now. Savannah Morris will drive, find a crease. Kick it back out to Sydney. She gets under the basket, puts it up nice. behind her head, lays it in. So five quick points for Sydney Morris. The Blackford pulls within two, and Franklin decides it's time to call a timeout and talk about how to defend that lady. 30 seconds, timeout. So as dismal as seem, things seemed a few minutes ago at halftime, down 11 to 18, it certainly feels a lot better at 16 to 18. Yes, it does. Blackford's going to try the 1 2 2 zone, zone press here. Try to force another turnover. It worked on the last possession. That ball off the off foot. Sydney Morris. I'm, you know, I'm not sure. I cut that more off the knee. Okay. I'm we have sure a replay if, at some point. I'm not sure if it matters if it the knee's a kick or if it's a kick. It's still a kick. But we still have a replay. Inside to Sperry again. It's short again. Good. Sperry yet to score. Good. Blackford comes Good. off with the rebound. They'll have possession with a chance to tie the game up. Van Skyak with a hesitation dribble. Kicked it out to Morris. This is Savannah spinning, driving baseline. Kicks it out to Van Skyak. She'll put up a three. Short. <laughs> Collins is triple teamed in the corner, and the Bruins get some arms in there. Force a jump ball. Franklin will keep it, but still good defensive effort. No fouls there. Collins stops short of the trap. They find Sperry inside underneath Whoa. the key. Good Collins defense. will launch another deep one. That's her fourth three. She has been trouble for the Bruins tonight. Eagle leading scorer, Emma Sperry, yet to score. But Amaya Collins, four three-pointers and 14 points. She's already up to her game average. Ben Scott forces the runner. Ben Scott is called for the foul after the miss. So Keith Blackford cut it to two there after trailing 18 to 11 at halftime. 16 to 11, but the Eagles answered. The Eagles have answered and moved back up by five. If you missed tonight's JV action in the girls game, Lady Bruins JV fell 34 to 30. They had several offensive chances to tie it up in the last minute of the game, tantalizingly close, but just couldn't get it to fall. The crowd over and over, if they could, were cheering the ball to go into the basket, but it just would not fall repeatedly. We're gonna get a foul here on Wicker. That's the first one for Chloe. 
no real foul trouble for the Bruins. Savannah Morris picked up two early in the first quarter, but she's still only got two here in the middle of the third. I think they'll be okay. Sperry and Key both have two for Franklin. Savannah Morris will push things forward, but then decide to drop it back off. Sydney thought about the three, decided no. Nice. Good drive, she gets the shot off the glass. Good strength. Draws the foul. That was the three point play when I was in high school. Man. Back before the three point line. Huh? Yes. Yeah. If you're home watching and you haven't had dinner yet, we've got the Blackford Fair board with pork burgers and pork chops tonight that are very tasty. So, so time to come out here, be here before the start of the boys' game. I don't think they'll get you, let you in for half price, even though you've missed the first game. But you can ask. Collins on the right wing. She's doubled by the Bruin defenders. Sperry from the top of the key. She'll put it up. Short again. Sperry continues to struggle. Blackford down two, a chance to possibly tie this game. Kephart looking for a cutter, no one there. Kephart posts up, but Savannah doesn't toss it in there. Van Scott, Van Scott will drive, kick it back out to Morris again. She'll drive, try to throw it up with the left hand and draw the foul. Again, the Bruins drive and seem a little bit out of control, but still draw the foul, so it works. So Savannah Morris will go to the line with a chance to tie this up. Number 25, Savannah Morris. Morris hits the first. Checking back in for the Eagles, 22, Anna Key. In for the road, number 11, Destiny Walter. Second shot by Morris, short off the Why front of the rim. Why did she do that? I looked away for a second. Keith, what happened? Uh, she grabbed the rebound, had possession, then stepped out to take it in. So with the turnover there, Blackford will have the ball with a chance to take the lead. Blackford hasn't led since late in the first quarter. Oh, the lane is totally open for Savannah Morris. She oh. drives and is fouled. There is something I enjoy about the girls' game. What just happened right there, even after the contact, the Lady Eagles helped uh, the foul person up. I've noticed a few times tonight that Franklin has helped, helped the foul Bruin off the floor. Yeah. Morris goes to the line again. This time she does tie it up, so I have one more opportunity. Savannah hits the second. Oh wait, that was that Sydney? That was Savannah, right? I don't know. Well, the scoreboard operator gave those points to Sydney, but I was pretty sure that was Savannah. But regardless, the Bruins have a one-point lead now. You were right the last time you did That's the true. with the scoreboard. I know, but everybody at home knows, and okay. so I don't want to keep saying it. Yeah. I don't know if I'm right or wrong. Oh, hard screen there by Hoagland. Hoagland now with the ball. Bruins will double team her. Van Scott reaches in, about pokes it away. Wicker with the kick as the Bruins putting a lot of pressure on the Franklin offense. So the Bruins have come all the way back to take the lead after trailing 18-11 at the first half. The Bruins got 11 points in the entire first half. They've already got 11 here in the first five and a half minutes of the third quarter. Collins with the roll. They get her the ball, but it's a little bit too late. Nothing that she can really do with it. Well, Sperry was not looking there, not ready for that one, but she's able to grab it. And Layla, Layla Deisler 
drives and finds a basket. She only averages a point a game, but give her two tonight. Two big ones as that moves the Eagles back on top. Van Skyhawk drives, throws up the left-handed runner. No foul called this time, despite lots of contact. Skyhawk with the steal. She thinks about pulling up, decides not to take the shot. Gephardt's not going to try to put it up from out there. That's, that's a little out of her comfort zone. Savannah will drive the right side, put up the runner. No good. And Collins will set things up for the Eagles. Blackford with the steal. There's a steal. There's a steal on a bucket for Sidney Morris. Lee changes hands again. Franklin with the miss. Rebound to Frank to uh, Savannah Morris. Less than a minute to go here in the third. Savannah looking for options. And Skyhawk will reset things from the top. She's going to back things out here with about 30 seconds to go in the third. Possibly looking for one. Savannah will drive the baseline. She finds Sydney. She gets the layup. Blackford goes up by three. 20 seconds to go. Perry will drive. She's still yet to score, but she's going to go to the line tonight. No points so far for Sperry, but she's going to have an opportunity at the line to draw the Eagles a little bit closer, down by three. At the line for the Eagles, number 10, Sperry. Sperry hits them both, her first two points of the night. It's a one point lead for the Bruins. That shot off oh. the front of the rim. I would have sure counted. Would it have counted? I think it would have. Uh, regardless, we end the third quarter. Blackford with a one point lead. 14 points for the Bruins in that quarter after only 11 in the first half. Blackford trailed 18 11 at halftime. And now, now they're up by one. Well, our statistician in North Carolina has not been available most of the night, but he's just checking in with us. We're going to see if we can bring him on here live to hear his voice and see how things are going out there. Jacob, are you with us? Well, there's an attempt, but... I'm not sure if others are hearing them. Are you hearing them? I'm not. Down, up by one. Savannah drives and kicks it to Sydney. Sydney looking for options. None really presenting themselves. No count started. Officials are not, not starting the standing five count. She drops it in to Savannah. 
Out to Gephardt, she'll throw up the left-handed runner around the rim and off. Bruins fighting against each other. Savannah ends up with it, gets it back up there. Rebound off to Curtis. Franklin tries to push it down the court. It's too tall for Collins and the ball will go back, back to Blackford. Seven minutes to go here. Gephardt sets things up for Blackford. Got a play going there for, uh, for Walter. Yeah, had a play going there for Walters. It nearly worked, it did draw the foul. Fouls on Curtis, that's her second. Again, no one from either team in foul trouble. Seven minutes to go in the game. Blackford trying to remain undefeated in the Central Indiana Conference, currently five and zero. Oh. Destiny Walter, I believe, was setting the screen there. She gets fouled as the Franklin Eagle tried to run through her. Not sure if they saw her there or not. We're going to get a timeout now by Franklin. They're going to discuss things a little bit. Seven minutes to go here in the fourth quarter. Blackford leads by one. with the ball here. Wicker will drive and spin. Nothing there. Collins playing very good defense on Wicker tonight. Wicker's only got six points. Two three-pointers early. Morris will throw up the three. A little bit out of frustration, I think, as much as anything. It's, it's short. Just start talking, and if we hear him, we hear him. Oh. Morris. Yeah, Sidney Morris in the corner. 5.34 to go. Blackford up by one. Sidney drives baseline. Tries to kick it out. To all the college. Blackford just a little bit at a loss of what to do offensively. Collins really hasn't got anything going either. She had 14, I believe, at halftime. I don't believe she's got a field goal this second half. Has yes, Chloe converted on anything in this second, second half? No, Chloe had two three-pointers earlier in the game. That's where she still is.
sure what the discussion is here. But regardless, we're ready to go. Freaking inbounds to Colin. Our last foul was on Walter. That's her first. Emma Key tries the three. Blackford's still up one as action's gotten a little slow. Neither team really able to get much going offensively. Sydney still just kind of standing and looking for some cutters, but never seemed to appear. And they end up with the travel. Definitely frustration by the Bruins. Collins skips to Sperry. Sperry still with, only, still with only two points. Averaging almost 20 a game. Only wow. two tonight. So Sydney Morris nearly with the steal. She needs to get back and help out the defense. And Franklin throws it away. Blackford still holds on to that 26-25 lead. So Van Skyak will bring things down, set things up for Blackford. Screen from Wicker, she rolls, but. Is our statistician online? We just got a banner saying that there's no score in the fourth quarter. No one has scored yet in the fourth quarter. Rebound by Wicker, she's shoved hard. There we go. But Blackford gets a basket. For the first points of the first quarter, four, over four minutes in. That's Turner for Frankton. Her shot won't go. Blackford's got Wicker. She draws the foul and gets the basket. Big basket by Wicker. Her first points of the second half. That foul's on Collins. Only her first. Collins had 14 at halftime. Still hasn't scored. And that's... That was Wicker's first points of the second half. That gives her eight. The free throw off the mark. Rebound to Savannah Morris, and it looks like Collins now will have two fouls. Foul called the Eagles number 32, Collins. Second team's four. Franklin now has four fouls, so the next foul will put the Bruins to the line. Blackford holding on to a five-point lead now. Franklin yet to score in the fourth quarter. Sydney Morris will patiently bring things, bring things ball out top. The five count has started now, and Blackford coaching staff will call a timeout. Things were not looking good there for the Bruins. Statistician. Yeah, I think we've got some sound problems worked out. They I'm not sure if they're particularly useful. They, they think that they can have me talk on there, but I don't. <laughs> we could. I've muted him until he realizes that he is talking. All right, three minutes to go here. We'll worry about Jacob later. We've got an exciting finish to go here. Blackford up by five. Three minutes to go. Looks like Blackford's just gonna try to play keep away up by five with three minutes to make your, draw your own conclusions whether or not you think that's a good idea. And I guess we're gonna find out. I have mine. 
As long as Blackford can handle the ball and not result in a turnover, it could work. This is more of a Southern Indiana style of basketball. Gephardt is about a 50% three point shoot or free throw shooter. If they do decide to foul, Blackford has run off about 30 seconds on this possession. And we do see Blackford do this from time to time. They will go into the four corners, stall, whatever you want to call it. Weave. Gephardt finds some space, drives the lane, and she draws the foul. Basket doesn't go in, 2.30 to go. I think, for the most part, Franklin might take that. But Gephardt, Gephardt struggles a little bit from the line. Check back in the Eagle line at 30 Sophia Holtman. Gephardt short on the second, but good hustle. She gets her own rebound. Wicker drives. She likes to spin in this situation. She forces it up, tries to draw contact, but no foul called on Collins. Wicker's a little frustrated, just about got a foul called on herself. Collin working hard to get a shot. She's probably frustrated too with no points in the second half. Well, the Franklin turnover, 2.09 to go. Blackford up by five. And a timeout by Franklin. So once again, Blackford 5-0 and in the Central Lane in the conference. This is a conference matchup. Blackford trying to stay undefeated and hopefully go into next Friday's matchup against the Eastbrook Panthers for a conference championship. Franklin probably out of the title hunt, but they would love to take the conference traveling trophy home with them tonight. Blackford currently has it, but if Franklin could win this ball game, they would take that trophy home. What is that trophy again? The trophy goes to the, it's a traveling trophy, so whoever. What is it though? It's a bell, okay. it's a bell. I believe its name is simply the bell. Okay. The boys' tro traveling trophy is a horseshoe. Called the horseshoe? I assume so, yes. So we've got 2.09 to go here in the fourth, I believe. Franklin has yet to score in the fourth quarter. In fact, they've only got seven points in the second half. The halftime score was 18 to 11. Franklin was up by seven. Franklin will apply the full court pressure. Blackford's tallest player bringing the ball up. She's stripped by Collins. Collins draws the foul. She's going to go to the line, try to pull this game a little bit closer. Just get the feeling that Collins is going to try to take over those last two minutes of this game to bring the Eagles back. At the line, Eagles 32, Collins. Collins good on the first. Collins is a 77% free throw shooter. The only one better on the Eagles is Sperry at 80%. She misses the second. Rebound, Savannah Morris. So Blackford up by four. Under two minutes to go in the game. We'll see if they stay in the stall. We four corners. Certainly if Franklin will let them, they probably will do that. But we're gonna get a foul now on Sperry. That'll be Sperry's second. That'll send. They're shooting. Man. That'll send us to the send Blackford to the strike. So Sydney Morris will go to the line. 67% from the free throw strike this year. She hits the first to move the Bruins up by five. Good night for Sydney. She's got 18. 
Give her 19. Put the Bruins up by six. 139 to go. Sperry looking for her first field goal. She hits it. That's four for Sperry. Morris tries to split the defense, loses the ball. Collins is wide open under the basket. Oh, right over the top. Good hustle by the Bruins. Savannah Morris ties it up. That's going to stay with Frankton. Blackford very lucky there that Collins' shot didn't roll in. Collins to Sperry. Back to Collins. Here's her shot. Oh, it's off the mark, but she is fouled by Gephardt. So Collins will get three shots now. She hits the first. Collins hits the second. Oh, was going to try to show the replay of that foul, but it wasn't quick enough. So Collins hits all three, pulls the game to within one, a one-point game. I don't think Blyford can try to run clock now. They've got to find a basket. Oh, Blackford really struggling here. Not really sure what they're thinking with. Yeah. They seem a little confused about how to attack this, how to attack that press. We'll get a timeout in Blackford. I have a chance to talk about that on the whiteboard a little bit. Here's the foul on the three. It's Collins, 32 at the bottom of your screen, takes the shot. Uh, not much there. Not a lot there. Regardless, the foul was called. Collins hit all three free throws. And we have a one-point ball game with the Bruins up with one minute to go on the board. And looking for a little help. Black, Blackford's going to go full court man to full court man to man. Not sure what happened there either, but off the ball, we'll get a foul on Faith Gephardt. Hits the first to tie it. And she gets the second to go. Franklin back on top. 52 seconds to go. Blackford trying to protect their undefeated conference record. It's now in jeopardy as they trail by one. 45 seconds to go in the game. Morris will spin, loses the ball off her foot. Collins comes away with it. And now Franklin will look to run a little clock. 35 seconds to go. Blackford may need to be, think about fouling. They don't really want to foul Collins at 77% or Sperry at 80%, but just about anybody else would be fine. The Eagles will try to keep it between Sperry and Collins, 10 and 32. That's the right foul. Blackford fouls Emma Key. She's a 64% shooter, not bad. 20 seconds to go.
Two hits the first. She hits the second. Blackford will need a three now. Or a quick two and a foul. Dan Skyak will bring the ball up. And Blackford will call a timeout to talk about what they want to do with 15 and a half seconds to go in the ball game. Blackford trailing by three against the Franklin Eagles. Conference standings as they are now. Blackford and Eastbrook both undefeated. They'll be meeting next Friday night. Blackford looking to stay, keep their record unblemished as they head into that game. Franklin's in the middle of the conference. Really no chance to win the conference at this point. But would love to be spoilers and would love to take home the bell, the conference traveling trophy that Blackford holds right now. Regardless of what happens tonight, Blackford will have a chance at least for a share of the championship as the Panthers, Eastbrook Panthers come to town next week. If the Blackfords have one loss, they will have a chance to give the Eastbrook Panthers a, a loss, which would result in a tie. Blackford will need a three-pointer here or a quick two and a foul. I assume their first opportunity will be to look for Chloe Wicker for three. Morris throws up his three. It's long, untouched by anyone. That's going to go to the Eagles. Nine seconds to go. Blackford will have to foul here. Blackford will go full court man-to-man. -man. And we'll have a timeout from the Eagles. Well, we're glad you all could join us tonight. Stick around after this one. About 25 minutes after the conclusion of this one, we'll have the Blackford boys against the Frankton boys. Blackford's nine and five overall. Frankton eight and five. Blackford two and two in the conference. Frankton three and zero. Oh. Looking for a shot at the sectional championship still. Down by three, nine seconds to go. Blackford will have to foul in this case. Blackford comes away with the steal. They're going to be called for over and back. I'm not sure that's how that is to be called. I don't know the details on that, but I don't believe that's the correct call. She did cross over, but I don't believe she had ever established on one side of the of the three-point line. She was basically straddling it. It's now under seven seconds, and Blackford will foul Sperry. Again, she's an 80% free throw shooter.
Blackford down, down five. Looks like the Frankton Eagles are gonna take the win. Wicker will throw up a three, it's off the mark. And the Frankton Eagles do capture the bell. They will take it home with them tonight, defeating the number 13 Blackford Bruins. Blackford, handing Blackford their first conference loss of the season. Despite that loss, Blackford will still have a shot to hand Eastbrook their first conference lock next Friday and earn a share of the conference championship. We've got a good crowd out here tonight. We'd love to have a good crowd out here to next Friday night to cheer the Bruins and boys and girls on as the girls go for a share of a conference championship. Stick around with us. We're going to have a bit of a ceremony here to honor former Bruin and former IU Hoosier Jill Chapman. One of Blackford's most prolific scorers and rebounders. In fact, one of Indiana University's most prolific scorers and rebounders. She's in the top five in multiple statistical categories. Jill Chapman tonight. Let's welcome Jill Center Park. Did you know that in addition to all those statistical accomplishments, Jill Chapman was also president of the Spanish Club? Wow. I took one semester of Spanish and struggled with that.
assuming that's the family there? Very good. Between games here, we're going to see if we can't get our stat boy connected to us. Jacob, are you there? Test, test. Am I here? You are there. Let me turn you down a little bit. Jacob ran a stat at the end of the game. I don't know if you saw it or not, Matt, about the run that the uh, Lady Eagles went on. I think it was uh, like 11 straight or 11 to two at the two minute mark of that last game. Yeah, it was 12 to two in the last two minutes. And that all started with a turnover and then the three point uh, foul. That was the first five points of the game. Keith, so well, Bruins are about to come out. We'll we'll let them come out and enjoy the uh, music. But we do have a replay of that last over and back call where the Bruins okay, looked like yes. they had a steal, and we can look at that a little bit where we're okay got some time here between games. But the Bruins are about ready to come out, and start their warm ups. You've been a hundred percent from the booth tonight, Matt. So this is instant replay. It's a little bit anything but instant since this happened several minutes ago. But in this situation, Blackford trailed by three with 10 seconds to go. Not sure if that's Sydney or Savannah Morris that went for the steal. And she's called for the over and back on this play. So take a look, draw your own conclusions. Oh, I have a conclusion. You have a conclusion Can already. You, you, want to see, you want to see it again first? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I have a conclusion. All right, and what is your conclusion? I think her momentum carried her, and she would, did not have established presence in the front court. Well, certainly her momentum carried her. I guess I'm just not clear enough on the rule. I think if it's the continuation of play and your momentum or your position is not established, it's not over and back. But... I don't know. It's a tough call. You've been 100%. By, by the letter of the law, maybe it's correct, but that's, yeah. that's rough. Yeah. I think a lot of fans in attendance tonight helped out with that call as well. Well, uh, we, we tried, but yeah. it was... The officials, unfortunately, were not asking for help. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Well, this is a first for me. I've never seen Blackford boys play. I saw a highlight of, I think, their last game where a young man named Wells put the team on his back, I do believe, in the last two minutes and uh, sparked a turnaround. Keats, since you brought it up, I do have that replay available. That was was that we, their last game? That was black, that was not their last game. Was actually actually it was their last game. It's been been a while, and we've forgotten. We've had two girls games since then, but. Blackford's win against Winchester was sparked by Kian Wells. Okay. Blackford was behind by 13 in the third quarter before Wells took over. Gives Wells a look from the left wing, and he knocks it down. Cut in the Falcon lead to eight. Bruins down eight. The chance to cut into the lead further. Wells drives again, and he knocks it down, and the Bruins have cut the lead to six now with a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Actually, they do a little bit of a dangerous pass. Wells is going to take it himself again. He draws the foul and gets the bucket. Cutting the lead to four. Falcon finds Price. He drives through the lane. He's blocked from behind by Wells. Blackford trails by three, 20 seconds to go here in the third. They're going to hold for one shot. No, they're not going to hold for one shot. Go too soon. Baker for three and a tie. It's good! So that was Blackford's comeback last week against Winchester. Blackford would go on to win that game.
All right, Keith, we have done a little more research into the backcourt violation rule. Okay, did we bring in the guy in New York? We, we, brought, in, we brought in our remote official researcher okay. who has no certifications whatsoever, I like but knows us. how to use the internet. So we will get a little delay here, but we will send it to Jacob to give an update on what he's found out about backcourt violations. Yeah, so I'm doing some, some internet research here and it looks like, you know, a backcourt violation is uh, it's considered when the team has control in the front court and then goes to the back court, right? So how you define team control? Well, Keith, I'm going with bad call. <laughs> yes, I do as well. But that, that, that was very enlightening. That was very enlightening. So there is something to the fact that she didn't really, was never established with control yeah. in the front court. But that's really cool. We can call in the chief official like they do in the NFL from New York to uh, render the uh, binding decision. He wasn't very committal, though. <laughs> he, did, he didn't really commit. But that was, that was the turning point, I think, in the run, uh, in Franklin's run. Or was it later in the game? Okay. Yeah. They need to bring us in like the third official in soccer. When, when we could have waved our, <laughs> put him, we could put him under the hood. Concessions are available in the hallway in the southwest of the gym here in the main entrance. And it's very much 
Championship. And it's an all fans, active spots, fan curves, and those around you. The use of that action and showing conduct is an acceptable and welcome at IHSA events. Let's afford the student athletes, coaches, officials, and fellow fans to respect and deserve your cooperation. is appreciated. Now the Brent Tent Man will play the Franklin School Song. All right, we're getting, we're working out the technical bugs with uh, talking to our man on the East Coast with respect to uh, our officiating decisions. It sounds like some of what he was trying to tell us was cut off when the replay was on. So we'll send it back to him one more time to clarify anything that might we might have missed. So Jacob, all yours. What defines team control is not entirely specifically outlined in the rules, but there is a clause for if you catch the ball, you can land with, if you jump and catch the ball, you can land with one foot in the backcourt. That's okay. There is no clause for momentum. So if your momentum carries you into the backcourt, that doesn't seem to be any kind of exception for that, but there is an exception for jumping and landing with one foot in the backcourt. You do have to have control in the front court before you go to the backcourt. So the question with this play is, A, was it a jump with one foot landing in the backcourt, and then B, did she ever have control in the front court? And you guys can go back and watch that replay if you so choose, but we're out of time now, so we're going to have to get back down to these uh, starting lineups. Again, we welcome you to Bruin Gym. Let's meet our visiting Franklin Eagles. Not starters, number three, Eli Birch. It is nice to have a statistician on staff. We are here. Yeah. Oh, Sam Barr. 22, Reed Bach. 24, Cole Hill. 34, Javon Miller. Starting for the Eagles. Number two, Joey Wright. Number 11, Brady Carmack. 14, Bella Henley. 21, Ethan Stansberry. 23, Nate Moore. Coach, Brent Robson. We are back for Bruins. Not starters, number two, Kittrell Tumor. 34, Evan Klein. 33, Richie Durin. Zero, Mason McKinley. 32, Jacob Dillon. Starting for the Bruins. 6 4 sophomore, number 24, Mason Kittrell. There is also a new wrinkle in the high school game that I've seen since the last time I've been, or especially since I've played in one, and that is the greeting and shaking of hands of the officials. That is nice. That was not present in the game when I played. Well, thanks for joining us or coming back with us again tonight for the Boys Varsity Contest, Blackford Bruins at nine and five, take on the Frankton Eagles at eight and five. Frankton, however, is undefeated at three and zero oh in the Central Indiana Conference, while Blackford is two and two. Frankton Eagles are led by number two, Joey Wright, 
And number 23, Nate Morris. Morris's average is just under 14 a game, while Wright averages just under 12. This is Wright number two. And this is Morris number 23. Eagles starting out very patiently and they'll draw a foul on Blackford's Gage Baker. Baker the leading scorer for the Bruins at 12 points a game, but really the Bruins are very balanced. Baker averages 12 while Jacob Lees and Ethan Morris both average 10. Kean Wells not far behind at eight and a half. Eagles get the ball inside to Austin Nunley, and Nunley starts the scoring off for the Eagles as they take the lead. Baker with the spin, it won't go. Eagles push it down the floor. Coast Root. to coast. Joey Wright with the easy bucket. Vince Oxley not starting tonight for the Bruins as they go a little bit smaller than they have at other times during the season. Morris in the lane, spins, puts up the shot, gets the shooter's roll off the back iron. And the Bruins are on the board now. Stripped away from right. Morris will drive the lane again. Ensign amongst the trees, loses the ball off his foot, I believe. Franklin will push the action. Layup by Carmack is good. Kitterman nearly loses it, but Drives the lane, draws the foul. Foul game is 23. More. Take this first. Prince try to inbound the ball to Kitterman, but loses the handle and the ball's out of bounds. Franklin up four already with. Checking in for the Five and a half minutes to go here in the first. Here's Nate Moore for three. Morris with the hesitation. Joey Wright a little bit off balance there. Ended up with a foul on right. Two right. Team second. Eagles in man-to-man -man defense. Wells was open under the basket briefly. Kitterman for three, hard off the back iron. Bruins come away with the rebound. Morris drives, kicks it out to Wells. Wells for three. Key and Wells picks up where he left off against Winchester. 
Well, it's brought the Bruins back from a 13-point deficit in the third quarter in that ball game. The Bruins went on to beat the Winchester Falcons earlier or last weekend. That's right on the drive again. He draws the foul and the bucket. Right, the second leading scorer for the Eagles is also a 72% free throw shooter, and he gets the second to go. The Eagles take the lead 9-5. to five. Baker looking for an opening, crosses over, gets into the lane, tries to initiate some contact, scoops it up and gets it to fall. Here's Moore, he'll drive the baseline, kick it back out to right. History off the mark and Morris gets the rebound. Blackford with a chance to tie now or potentially take the lead with the three. Uh, nice fake by Morris, but Frankton able to recover. Carmack on the drive there, tried to lay it off to teammate in the middle of the lane. I can't believe they're gonna sh shoot this because he was definitely making a pass. We are not in the bonus yet. Carmack hits the first, he'll go to the line for the second. But Morris was having trouble inbounding the ball, was about to stumble over the inline, so the Blackford coaching staff wisely called a timeout to prevent the turnover. Frankton off to a good start so far. Yet to miss a field goal, and they're up by four. Joey Wright's added five for the Eagles. And Brady Carmack has the other. Well, he has four. It's nine of Frankton's 11. Oxley in now for the Bruins. He's been in there for a little bit. But Three from the corner is good by Baker. The Bruins cut the lead to one. That's five points for Baker here in the first quarter. Here's right, he'll drive the lane with the left hand. Kick that out to Stansbury. That foul's gonna go against Nate Moore, I believe. So the foul against the leading scorer for the Eagles, and that is his second here with two minutes to go in the first quarter. So Moore will go to the bench. 
Bruins will have the ball trailing by one with a chance to get back on top. Baker with the hesitation drive draws the foul. I believe that'll be, no, that's only four. That's the fourth on Franklin, so the next one will send Blackford to the line. Wells will penetrate the, penetrate the lane. Kick it out to Morris, back into Oxley. He hits the bunny, and Blackford is back on top, 12-11, 1.40 to go in the first quarter. Well, Moore is still in. That was not Oxley earlier. That was Collin. Appreciate the correction there, Jacob. Is Eagle player Carmack is fouled hard by Morris. That is, in fact, Gavin Call at 34 in the game that I mis incorrectly called out as Oxley. Doesn't look like Oxley's available. I believe he's on the bench, but not dressed this evening. Checking back in from the Eagles, number 34, Javon Miller. Call it hands to Morris, who tries to go between the lanes, loses it. Call it with the drive, and he's called for the offensive foul. That's a tough one. It was a good touch to get that shot to go down, but the defender was able to get set up in time. So call it will come out. Kitterman's back in the game. That's a second foul on call it. Eagles find right underneath the basket. He kicks it back out. More shot well off the mark, but the rebound is up and in. Jacob Lee with the he hesitation kind of slipped and the last second didn't really have any options but to chuck the ball at the basket. The officials making sure that Sam Barr checks in at the scorer's bench. And we're ready to go again here. 23 seconds to go in the quarter. Franklin with the ball up two. Moore cuts to the basket. Nearly a block by Baker, but foul's called. And that'll be two on Baker here, still in the first quarter. So Collett and Baker both with two. Well, Nate Moore has two for Franklin. It has 10 seconds here to try to cut into this lead. Morris loses the ball. And they say it's off the Eagles. The 
three a bit short, but I believe we're going to have a foul on the Eagles on the rebound. Nope, that's going to go against Blackford. It's going to go against Ethan Morris. So Blackford definitely in a little bit of foul trouble now. That's the second on Morris as well. So not only does that, the second on Morris, that'll send Franklin to the line with two and a half seconds to go. Unfortunate turn of events there. The Eagles lead by four already with a chance to bump that up a little bit here before the end of the quarter. Barr misses the second. Blackford will throw up the half court shot and it's long. So after the first quarter, Frankton leads Blackford by five, 17 to 12. If you weren't with us earlier, the Blackford Lady Bruins came into tonight's contest 5-0 in the conference. Got behind 18-11 at halftime. Came back to took the lead, take the lead, but Franklin was able to come back in the final couple of minutes with a scoring run of their own. And they defeated the Blackford Bruins. Blackford gets their first loss in the conference. But even with one loss, they will face Eastbrook undefeated Eastbrook Panthers next week here at Blackford High School. With the win, Blackford would tie for the conference championship. I have really enjoyed the uh, pet band tonight. Setting where we sat and hearing the volume and uh, it's really been enjoyed. Jacob, if you have any first quarter stats for us, go ahead and jump in now. Yeah, the biggest thing right now is just the foul trouble concern for Blackford. Gage Baker, Ethan Morris, and Gavin Collett all with two. As far as scoring, no one from either team has more than five. Blackford starts the second quarter with the ball, down by five. Lisa will drive baseline, holding off the defender with his left arm. Kitterman with the three from the left side. Here's Moore, he's, he's the leading scorer for Frankton. He's got, or on the season, not tonight. He's got 2,000, he's back in the game. Wright will throw up a three, oh. in and out. Wright will drive the right side, now he splits the Bruin defenders, the ball again in and out. Here's Carmack, he's cut off. Carmack will spin, a lot of steps there in the lane, throws it up and he gets the shot to roll. Roll in the basket. Kitterman about had his head took off there by Carmack. I don't think there was anything intentional there. Now foul on Eagles number 11, Carmack. That's first, team's first. Carmack thought about the three. He'll drive the left side of the lane instead. 
Wells with the rebound. Kitterman again for three. Off the board, off the rim. Moore will push things up for Franklin. He has yet to score. Carmichael drive the lane again. Rims out. Rebound to the Bruins. Wells will drive and spin, get a little separation, but air ball off the back rim. First made three of the night for Franken in this 10 point lead, biggest lead so far of the night. And it's a 11 to nothing Franken run since Blackford was leading 12 to 11. We have one final score from the CIC already tonight in boys basketball. Oak Hill defeated Alexandria 71 to 45. Is that an upset? I forget from standings. I'm trying to get the CIC lodged into my brain. So these, these would have been before that result. So this was this was a boys game that went final, and those are the girls standings there. <laughs> yes, well, sorry about that. The Bruin shot off the mark again. Franklin now with a 10 point lead. Four minutes to go here in the first half. Have the ball, a chance to stretch that out even further. Carmack's been very active on the drive the last several possessions. Moore, the leading scorer, 23, has not scored yet tonight, and yet Franklin still has a 10 point lead. Wright will drive, and this time he gets it to go in. Tumor has the ball stolen away. Screen for right, back to Moore for three. It's good, and Moore is on the board now. And the Bruins are in trouble at this point, trailing by 15. for three. Wright will take it to the hole, draws the foul on Kitterman. Number two, right. 
Well, that free throw will give Joey Wright 10 points so far here in the first half. He's leading the Franklin Eagles. Kitterman in. No. Yeah, finds Jacob Dillon inside. I didn't see Dillon come in. Inside the Carmack, but it's blocked by Wells, I believe. Wells with the floater, closes the gap. Still 13 though, 29 to 16. Under two minutes to go here in the first half. Carmack will drive again and scoop it up again. That's nine for Carmack. Lee tries the same thing, but it's swatted away by Moore this time. Kitterman able to get that one up and in over the outstretched arm of Moore. The Bruins cut the lead to 13. The Bruins trailed Winchester last week by 13 in the third quarter, so certainly not out of this ball game yet, but definitely need to get some offense going. Offense getting just some really good inside looks that time to Stansberry. Luis finds Dylan inside. Dude, Jacob Dylan, four points today. Dylan had a total of 19 points this season coming into some nice game. He's got four here in the second quarter. Jory Wright with another two there to end the half. And at the halftime, Blackford trails the Frankton Eagles 35 to 20. Well, I saw something in that half that I've never seen in Indiana high school basketball uh, while I've been watching or playing. I saw a player with two different colored shoes. <laughs> I have never seen them. At Blackford's Key and Wells wears a uh, red shoe and or, I'm not sure red is the white color, a fluorescent reddish shoe and a green shoe. Yeah, I thought that was a uh, very cool self-expression. Oh, that's interesting. They're playing knockout.
Who would these uh, young players be? be the winner. No. I think all three are still alive. There one should go out. We should be No, that was the that's the winner. Congratulations to that young man on his knockout championship. I believe the game's still going on the other end, Keith. Oh my. Or maybe there's a down to the final four on the red end of the court. The three, I believe. Some good shooting going on here now. Try to run the clock out with six minutes to go. What I would really like to know here, Keith, when this is done, is if Jacob is keeping the shooting percentages. Yeah. So we're down to the final two, it seems. Tired. That would be tiring. We're down to five minutes to go in the first in the halftime. We can't hardly get the ball to the rim anymore. Game. There's your winner. <laughs> oh, again. Getting down to the final on the other end. Oh, they're going to go again. We have a halftime stat update for Jacob. I'm sure he's big, he'll have shooting percentages here for the game of knockout and perhaps could explain the rules of knockout if you're not aware of those. Well, I don't have any knockout shooting percentages, but it looks like they're doing a pretty good job. So scoring for the Bruins in that first 
half. Kean Wells had five. Gage Baker had five. Jacob Dillon came off the bench to get four. Mason Kitterman had two. Ethan Morris had two. And Gavin Collett had two. For Frankton, Joey Wright led the way with 11. Grady Carmack had nine. Ethan Stansberry had five. Nate Moore had five. Max Barr had one. Austin Nunley and Javon Miller each had two. Now we talked about at the end of the first quarter the foul trouble that the Bruins were getting in. Gage Baker, Ethan Morris, Gavin Collett all had two fouls in that first quarter. And we saw them sit pretty much the whole second quarter. And it did not go well, at least at first. Um, the, the second quarter began with Frankton scoring the first 12 points of the wow. quarter to grow the lead from 12 to 17 all the way up to 12 to 29, and then it kind of stabilized from there. But we saw something we don't usually see from Blackford very often, at least on the boys' side. We saw three bench players playing for almost that whole second quarter. Uh, shooting percentages, really not that bad for Blackford. They were 8 of 20 in the first half, 40%. Frankton was just really good, 12 of 22 for 55%. And most of that came from inside the three-point line. They only made two three-pointers, and then Blackford also only made two three-pointers in that first half. Jacob did not elect to explain the rules of knockout. Uh, there, we have a uh, rule that I didn't see here tonight when we play, which is you're allowed to throw the opponent's ball as far as you can down the cul-de-sac. And uh, yeah, that usually turns it into a physical contest. I believe it's also a good strategy to throw it directly at their ankles. <laughs> yeah, we've had a lot of fun with that game. Well, Blackford does trail by 15, but again, last weekend, the Bruins trailed Winchester by 13 in the third quarter, and were able to come back and win that ball game, so. You never know what can happen. I wouldn't say Blackford has necessarily been outclassed in this game. They look like they could compete with Franklin. I would agree with you. Definitely they need to step up the defense and stop the drives to the basket. They're allowing some uh, uncontested shots under the basket. Blackford certainly puts on a good show for anybody that uh, is looking for something to do in the middle of winter on this dismal weather to get inside here with the lights and the energy and just good entertainment. Uh, I would recommend you do so. I drive almost an hour and I am glad that I do. Uh, I enjoy what I see and sometimes I get so caught up in it I forget I'm supposed to be running a camera for which I apologize. But, uh, I would recommend you come out and support the teams in the remainder of their season. Well, especially next week as the girls and the boys both, both host the Eastbrook Panthers next Friday night. The girls will be playing for a share of the conference championship. They've had a great season, several good seasons in a row, and they'd love to have your support next weekend. Carmack looks inside for Moore, kicks it back out to Wright, who will drive to the basket. Shot contested by Kitterman. Foul. That foul, foul, goes, foul goes against Wright. That's Wright's second. So Wright and Moore, two leading scorers for Franklin on the season, both have two fouls, but should be okay as Baker's shot clings off the back iron and Franklin pushes the ball down. Carmack with the spin, no call on the contact. with the travel. We're going to take the ball back. I was asked to re remind folks that next week, if you do come out for that Eastbrook Camp Panthers doubleheader and conference championship game, 
FFA is also holding the chicken noodle dinner that night. Oh so my! Come on out for dinner. I would come and for two just, highly yes. contained or highly entertaining basketball games. Baker with the drive. He gets it to go and leads down to 13. That girls game will feature Chloe Wicker, and for Eastbrook, who lost her name here. So really have that before I start to say this. The leading three-point shooters in the conference. Yeah, Eastbrook's Sophie Morrison and Blackford's Chloe Wicker. Going into tonight, both were tied for sixth overall in the state with 62 made three-point baskets. As Franklin adds a layup here and goes back up by 15. So see some good action, some good teams, good shooters. Should be a really fun night here at Blackford next Friday night and chicken noodles. to right. Moore looking for an opening, finds done. Franklin in no rush. 15 point lead. Lots of time still here to go in the third quarter there. Very happy to take a long possession. Blackford does end up with the steal. That's the danger. If you hold the ball long enough, eventually it will end up in a turnover. And Gage Baker gets the layup, cutting the lead to 13. with the drive, draws a foul on Morris. That is his third now. Inbound lob to Nunley. Doesn't work out. The Bruins push it up. Wells is swatted relatively hard. He'll go to the strike. So the lead is 13, Keith. He was 13 in the third quarter. Wells hits the first. I do like those shoes. And he hits the second. The lead down to 11. 440 to go in the third. Wright will launch a three. It's deep, rebound. I'm gonna call a jump ball. It was either that or call a travel, so. On the alternating possession, Blackford will keep the ball. Now down 11, a chance to cut the lead into single digits. That would be big. Lee will spin. Drops the ball off to Morris. He's got it, and Morris has cut it to lead to nine. It's just Ethan Morris's fourth points, both of them here in the last minute or so. It's free throws in his first basket. Stansberry for Franklin, looking for help. Gets some from right over to Moore. Moore with the drive. It's blocked by Kitterman.
not only having a little conversation with the official, he wasn't happy about something. He was claiming that the Bruin defense was pulling on his jersey. Carmack was getting that drive down the right side of the lane earlier. So far, we haven't really seen that. Good, Good cut by Moore. Side. Can't get the layup to go. Blackford with the rebound. Blackford trailing by nine. Ah. Nearly lost, but that should. Blackford ball. It should be. I didn't see actually an official make a call of the whose ball it was. We made it from up here. We did. Well, the Bruin players also did. They just decided they're going to stand there and let them hand them the ball. Checking back in. The Baker with a pull up three. Off the mark, rebound to Carmack. Right will reset things for the Eagles. A little bit of a clear out here for Wright. Off the mark. Rebound. Rebound to Morrison. He's fouled by Carmack. Probably just two on Carmack. Two and a half to go in the third quarter. Blackford trailing by nine. They managed to cut into this Franks and lead substantially here in this quarter. That's what sets up their offense. Here's Wells. He'll drive the lane. Blocked by blocked by Carmack. <laughs> Nearly a foul there. A lot of contact. Moore tries to dunk it. It's blocked by who was that? It was blocked by Ethan Morris. Got a Bruin player on the floor here. There's some pretty significant contact. It's out of range from our replay to go back to at this point. You can go back and look if you're on YouTube and see kind of what happened there. But some significant contact that was not called a foul at the time. So that is Morris who's down. He's Definitely, definitely dealing with some pain. Coming in from the room, it's number 32, Jacob Hill. He's moving around a little stiff. It looks like he'll probably be all right. I'd expect him to come back in. Here's Baker with the crossover. Jacob Lee's yet to score tonight. Wells drive the lane, he's fouled. That's what, Keith, we know you like this shoe. Okay, but, sorry. But he missed a free throw, and I'm not sure anybody saw that. Those are nice shoes, I admit. Wells hits the second, and the lead down to eight. That's the closest he's been for quite some time. I could extend the defense. Good job recovering to cover the pick and roll. 
Wright finds an opening. Across to Moore, he knocks down the three and moves the lead back up to 11. Baker gets a screen. The shot blocked by Carmack. He's put up his first three pointer of the night. Can't get it to fall, but the Bruins will retain possession. Least looking to score again. Again off the mark, rebound to Carmack. 25 seconds to go. Frankton will slow things up here. Look to probably take the last shot of the third quarter, leading by 11. The ball to Carmack inside, it's blocked. Baker got that shot off, probably had a few more seconds. But didn't quite know how much time he had left. The shot comes up short. And Blackford does cut into the halftime lead of Frankton. They got it all the way down to eight. Now it's back up to 11, which is a little bit concerning. However, Blackford trailed by 11 last weekend and with two minutes to go in the third when Kean Wells led the comeback. Just sitting in a 2-3 zone, gives Wells a look from the left wing, and he knocks it down. Cut in the Falcon lead to eight. Bruins down eight. The chance to cut into the lead further. Wells drives again, and he knocks it down, and the Bruins have cut the lead to six now with a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. So they do a little bit of a dangerous pass. Wells is going to take it himself again. He draws the foul and gets the bucket. Cutting the lead to four. Falcons find Price, he drives through the lane. He's blocked from behind by Wells. Blackford trails by three. 20 seconds to go here in the third. They're going to hold for one shot. Oh, they're not going to hold for one shot. Go too soon. Baker for three and a tie. It's good! So Blackford last weekend was able to come back from 11-point deficit in only two minutes in the third quarter. Today they trail by 11, the start of the fourth. Wright's three is off the mark, but Morris gets the rebound. Loses the handle, but it's stripped away and foul called on that. Wells doesn't necessarily agree with that call. That's just his first foul. is back in after taking a tumble earlier. His shot won't go down, but he'll put up a three now. It's a little short.
Carmack down on the block. He's able to get it up over the two Bruin defenders and in the basket. The lead extends out to 15 for the Eagles. Baker for two. Rebound Kitterman. Kitterman did not land well there. Looks like he's gonna be all right though. We'll walk that off. Wells with the spin, step back, knocks it home. More inside for the basket and the two point or and the foul. We'll have a chance to move this lead up to 16 if we can make this one. But he doesn't. But the Eagles come away with the rebound. Bucket here would be really big. It would make things really comfortable for the Eagles if they could go up 17 with under six minutes to go. time for me to introduce to you the concept of the comfort zone. Have, have you heard me it, talk about that? It's a matter of the time left in the game, the point spread, and there's more variables than that. Isn't yes, there? once a team has entered the comfort zone, you can be comfortable that the outcome is pretty well decided. If you need to go to the refrigerator, go to the bathroom, you can feel comfortable doing that. The stress is done. Whether your team's winning or losing, you're comfortable that it's about over. The formula is the number of minutes rounded up, so now that would be six, yes. times two, 12. which is 12, plus five. 17. 17. We're not there. The lead is 15. No, but however, if Frankton could score a bucket here, they would move into the comfort zone. I could go get a pop? You could, yes. I, I hey, look, you're so much in the comfort zone, we can't even see the game because we're watching the band. Sorry. You <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I was on the scoreboard. Oh, uh, there's a ten. Thank you. Just third. <laughs> so five plus the minutes rounded up times two. Six times two plus five. Oh, the Bruins will avoid the comfort zone, it looks like, with the bucket here. Oh, it doesn't go, though. Bruins now have five seconds, and just by time expiring alone, Frankton will move into the comfort zone as the comfort zone calculation drops under 15, which is now the current Eagles lead. And now, Keith, if you were not operating the camera, you could go get a Coke. At least for three. It's blocked. Wright ends up with the ball. Carmack with the bucket. That'll be a foul on Wright. It'll be his third. Wright has 13 right now. He and Carmack are together leading the Eagles, both with 13. Moore has 10. Frankton 
but Blackford Wells has 10 and Baker has nine. Right with the drive, missed. He was out of bounds when he tried yeah. to save it. Keith, as I look around, I see people like on their phones, checking their email, checking their Facebook. You know why? Comfort zone? Because Franklin is in the comfort zone, yes. Jacob Least will get to the basket. Draw the foul. I will say, though, I have not seen any sign of Blackford giving up. Oh, absolutely not. At least gets the first free throw. That's his first points of the night. This is averaging 10 a game on the season, but only one so far tonight. Rebound by Morris, that's a nice spin there, but can't get the follow-up to go in either. Franklin will take their time bringing the ball up the court. Right, we'll lob to Moore. Moore gets the layup. And the Eagles move out to a 20 point lead. That's Miller for the Franklin Eagles. Miller's got six now. Miller's going to be called for the foul, and Franklin will send in some bench players. Nice. Lease will get a finger roll to go in. That should count.
Crawford definitely not quitting. No. Working hard on defense. That's impressive. That is impressive. circles around those may be Reedbot's first points of the season if we had no uh, no previous stats on him and the Franklin Eagles will take a timeout Again, the Blackford Bruins showing no signs of letting up. A lot of season still left for the boys team. Only one game remains for the women regular season as they host Eastbrook next week. The boys also host Eastbrook next week, but they've got half a dozen games left after that. Next Saturday, they'll travel to Jay County one of Blackford's rivalry schools. Actually, back-to-back -back rivalry games there with Eastbrook here and then at Jay County next weekend. So a big weekend for the boys. As we've said many times already, the girls will be hosting Eastbrook for a share of the conference championship on Friday night. Franklin with the win tonight, they're gonna move to 4-0 in the conference. I don't know if we have any other scores from tonight. Maybe Jake will chime in a little bit if he's been able to track any others down, especially that Mississinawa, Mississinawa contest. I'm not sure who they played tonight. Mississinawa 4-0 after tonight in the conference with three contests remaining. Keith, it's been over 10 years since Franklin has had a losing season. Wow, okay. Their last losing season was the 2010-2011 season. That's a strong program. Not only that, but in that time frame, they've won four sectionals, three set, three regionals, two semi-state championships, and one state championship. And one state championship? Yes, sir. Blackford falls to nine and six overall, two and three in the Central Indiana Conference. Franklin advances to nine and five, more importantly, four and zero oh in the Central Indiana Conference. So 
So a reminder, I know we've said it lots of times, but next Friday night, please join us out here at Blackford High School. We'll have first at six o'clock, the girls varsity contents against Eastbrook as they compete for the conference championship. That'll be followed by the boys varsity contest against the Eastbrook Panthers. It's also FFA chicken noodle dinner night. So come out early, grab some dinner, enjoy two exciting basketball games. The girls game tonight was exciting. Lady Bruins came back from a large deficit to take the lead, but eventually fell to their first conference loss of the year. So they're now five and one in the conference. The boys got behind relatively early and never really were able to mount much of a comeback. They did cut the lead to eight midway through the early in the third quarter. But really never threatened Franklin in the second half tonight. Final scoring statistics tonight for the Bruins. Gage Baker led the way with 14, despite getting those two fouls early in the first quarter. Kean Wells had 10. Ethan Morris had four. Jacob Dillon had four. Mason Kitterman had two. Gavin Collett had two. And boy, it was a rough night for Jacob Lee. He averages 10, only had three tonight. One of 10 from the field. But uh, he'll, he'll bounce back. But if there was ever a night that the Bruins needed him, it was tonight uh, as a lot of the starters got in foul trouble there in the first quarter. For Frankton, Joey Wright had 11, Brady Carmack had 13, Nate Moore had 13, Ethan Stansberry had five, Javon Miller had six, Austin Nunley had four, Rebot had two, Colton Amell and Max Barr each had one. There were two lead changes there in the first quarter, uh, but you know, as we said, got away from the Bruins there in the second, and then kind of stabilized there around 15 to 17 points. So those are the final scoring numbers from tonight's game. We well, appreciate you all joining us tonight. We'll see you next weekend for Jacob Clam out in North Carolina. On our stats, Keith Cottle on the camera, Jared Hammond running the scoreboard for it, and myself. I wish you a very pleasant evening. <laughs>